on with sprinklers. So everybody, I'm thinking everybody here is pretty much on flood. Okay. Um, well, we have some fields. We have zero flood now, obviously due to our constraints out on the west side. Um, so we have about we have three quarter sections. We have 406, 400, roughly 465 acres on drip, and which roughly half, and the rest is on sprinkler irrigation. We have seen tremendous increases in yield with significant less amount of water applied. With sprinklers, every time you're going in with an irrigation, you can feed one well, and we're talking a well that can do about 2,000 gallons a minute. One well can feed eight lines, okay, eight sprinkler lines. Well, guess what, it takes you eight days to get across the whole field, okay? Eight days to irrigate one alfalfa field. With the subsurface drip, you're looking at two days, 48 hours, okay? You're talking about applying nine inches of water per acre per cut on sprinklers, opposed to four inches of water per acre with the subsurface drip. Now you guys may think, well, how does that differentiate in yields? This field, these fields, I mean, I, I don't, I didn't look back to get, you know, precise numbers, but I know on average, the drip fields are doing every bit of a ton and three quarter, every cut to two tons. Most cuts actually two ton plus. As opposed to the fields that we have on sprinklers that are, this year is worse, obviously we have tomatoes that are neighboring, so you know what, the price of tomatoes, the mar you know, we're, we're choosing to allocate more water, obviously to the tomatoes. So the, the alfalfa is kind of the, the, gets that water when we have it, basically. So obviously the, our days of cutting are being prolonged a little bit, again, due to the water constraints. With the drip, you're going in, you're irrigating 48 hours, you're gone for two or three days, even four days, we've seen, is okay. You come back and put on another 48 hours, and you're done. You're done. Look at that, four days, as opposed to eight days. And guess what? Sometimes one pass of the sprinklers doesn't cut it for us. You get a foot of growth, you know what? It just doesn't pencil out. You gotta go in and put another sprinkler application. Every time, that's $20 of labor per acre because those sprinkler lines don't move themselves, okay? And these are the examples for us. I wish I had some better data regarding our, you know, what we did on flood that could pertain more to what you guys are experienced with. But, I mean, when, when the price of hay is 300 bucks, you know, maybe that number is a little soft, I know what it's going for. You know, if you're talking about another $225 an acre that you're making per cut, in addition to what you're saving in water with the subsurface drip. Like I said, we've been very fortunate in that it's really, I think we're, it's a new trend. And then obviously in our area, you couldn't, you couldn't flood a field. It just wouldn't pencil out. Your water, every acre foot of water is costing us from our wells $350, okay? Obviously if you wanted to buy metered water, that would be every bit of $1,600, $1,700 per acre foot in West of Water District. So, I don't know, uh, the only thing I can see, uh, the only thing I can see pencilling out for that, maybe some almonds, grapes, and things of that sort. Okay. What's the estimated cost per acre to put in a subsurface drip in our house? It's about, it's like any other permanent crop, like tomatoes, I don't know, any tomato growers in here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, it costs any bit of, I would say, $1,200 and $1,400 an acre. The capital costs going in are a little bit substantial, but keep in mind, this alfalfa hay, it's not gonna go out, you're not gonna plant it and say, oh, I'm not gonna grow alfalfa hay next year. The, the plan is long term, okay? And you're on 60 inch beds. That's how we planted it. The beds do, obviously the swathers are going in there, the bales are going in there, the beds do tend to, you know, subside, settle a little bit, okay? So the probability of going from alfalfa to let's say a tomato or something like that without you know proper tillage 
may not be feasible. But we're putting on 15 mil tape, so we're putting on some of the thickest tape uh, available, and it's all one in five eighths. So we only have one very drip line. And this is all on like clay low soil, so it's heavier soil. Now if I were to do it on a sandier soil, I would say maybe even do 40 inch beds. You want to get that water to really sub and feed <clears throat> the rest of the, the neighboring uh, furrows. How, how deep are you going with it? Any bit of 10 to 12 inches. And your cement spacing is around like 14? To yeah. Typical joint, yeah, 12, 14. And you did say on the top of the hay, you're also 60 inch laterals? Yes, sir. 60 inch. I have pictures that I, I plan to share with you guys. I mean, Definitely show them around if you guys would like. So, the, the only thing I did want to brush on just briefly, and it kind of related back to what Dr. Goodell spoke about, is the pest brush. Okay, in alfalfa seed, what we've noticed since we go long, long time periods without irrigation, uh, as you know, uh, you'll go. You know, when you're setting your seed, you might go a month, month and a half without water. Okay. So that time period, we do see a little bit of increase of voles, gophers. That's one of the biggest questions. Well, you know, voles, gophers. Well, when you're maintaining moisture, you know, at every two to three weeks, we haven't seen the problem. We haven't seen gophers are almost non-existent. Okay. Voles, we do get some voles a little bit, but we. We have, you know, we, we're trying to be as proactive as possible to any, pro, uh, to any problem that may arise. We have one irrigator that takes care of the section, okay, or even a little more. But that irrigator, when that field is being irrigated, is very focused on leaks, things of that sort. Just like any other uh, subsurface crop, just like tomatoes, just like uh, cotton. I mean, no different. So we haven't seen any problems with the hay in that. We have seen it in the with the, with the seed. Not so much with the hay because of the constant moisture month by month. Uh, also, the one thing Dr. Goodell did brush up on, and I, like every time he mentioned, I, I know I walked in late, but when he mentioned some of those experiences, I, I mean, it really refreshed my mind of what I showed him. And uh, we did see that the only thing, like he mentioned, in a dry year, like this past year, we did see a loss in stack due to the hay for problem. Now, why was the aphid more prevalent in the field? I, I feel like we had, uh, as opposed to those sprinkler fields, irrigated fields, that those subsurface drip fields were more effective in terms of aphid damage. And it makes perfect sense to me. As, as an agronomist, as a PCA, we're not putting on any surface water. Ideally, you want to keep the water, you don't want to sub, the water to sub all the way up. Okay, so. You, you're not seeing any surface water. You don't see, especially no foggy days, where the fields are out in five points, you're seeing no foggy days. There's no promotion for that beneficial fungus to really spread and help control that aphid. So what do you do? Who knew we had to check aphid in January? I did it, but I know now. It's a learning experience. And yeah, we, we did see all about a loss of maybe and one field in particular maybe lost of 20% uh, of our stack due to the April problem. Are you mitigating any kind of uh, pesticides? Lord, I'm kidding. No, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not doing. Uh, we're not doing any chemicating. The only thing that we do put on is um, the, the calcium hypo for cow hypo for root intrusion. Um, but other than that, nothing else. Uh, we don't fertilize either, we're not putting any, I mean, if we needed to, you know, bring them from 10, 34 hours, or something like that, that's where that might be something we look, we look into. Um, but no, we are fairly not uh, coming getting into of that sort. You mentioned your, your yield improvement and your sustained growth during that shorter time. What, what kind of uh, results you have seen in uh, your forage wall? You know, that was actually uh, a question I brushed upon. Uh, my dad's the general manager of, of the company. Um, and we were talking about that last night as far as uh, quality. And he was inclined to say that quality was actually increased. I wish I had some actual concrete numbers to, to, to uh, share with you, uh, but I don't. But, but the overall impression was that quality did increase. And there's, there's a number of acres of subservice in this area. <coughs> yes. Yeah. 
And, and it's primarily uh, a lot of runoff issues and I mean, what, what was the uh, whole one's motivation to go down? Okay, good. That's, Man, that's a great rotation crop. So, we're over here, they battle big kinds of problems. Yeah, like, what, 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 what road do you mind if I ask for? Road, go for it. Go for it. Big kind. You can see crews out there. And we, that's the kind of vibe that, you know, with the alfalfa seed, we have that problem very much. But with the hay to this point, we've been pretty fortunate that we do not have that. And we're, I'm attributing it more to that fact that we're, the moisture, how much are you guys running, if you don't mind me asking, how, how long are you running? No, it's not, I, I don't oh. know. Oh, okay, I, how long, do you know how long their sets are running now? I think it might be the soil time. I mean, I think out here you're, you're dealing with, I think, lighter soils, correct? It's, 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 or is this how, what kind of soil are we dealing here with? Okay. It's real heavy. Let's okay. collect, okay, then that, that's where I see we, in San Joaquin, we have some clay, you know, heavy cracking soils, and that's where we got problems with the gophers and the bowls. So it could be attributed to something of that sort. So, and especially if you go for long periods, sometimes, you know, the guys don't get the swathers, don't get there to cut, bailers take a while to, to bail, they, those things can attribute to that. How long have you had your, um, your haystacks? stands? We have uh, one field that's three years, and uh, the other field are, is their second year. You find when you uh, cut the hay on the ground, when you put a shot of water to it sometimes? Say, say that again. When you cut and the hay's on the ground, would you sometimes put a shot of water to it? No. No. We wait till they, no, there's no way. No, we, we, let it, we let the guys go in there and rake and bale, and we, as soon as they're done, we'll come in with water. Okay, but I remember a couple of guys down here. That'll actually run the water? No, not for a long time. Just kind of let all water in yeah. Right. No, we, we just. Keep it off and we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it after as soon as the bailer does. It breaks the problem. Yeah, we've seen very promising results with it. Uh, I'm actually, I'm actually a master student at Fresno State, and I'm going to probably, you know, focus on answering some of these questions that are that are coming up. And I'd rather, I'd really like to go into a cost analysis to 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 see what what the true differences are. You know. And how significant, and, you know, how feasible this this method can be? Because I know predominantly the industry is still quite a bit into flood and you know sprinkler irrigated. Is oh, yours flat? No. So you can't you can't. It's 16 inches. It's light. I mean, we're talking about. You can't alternate your traffic. You can't alternate your traffic. You can't alternate your traffic. You no, 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 no. You, you cut one way. way. You cut one way. We cut the fields are. We have one field that's north and south. We have one field that's east and west. Two fields. Those two fields are east and west. That feels more. Yeah, there's been some work done with by planting flat and then being able to all the major trafficking that you entails and interesting you put that in when you know that. We personally, uh, my family and I have farm a little bit and we do have a field, a couple of fields that are flat as a table. We're seeing promising results with it, but I think we went too wide on our spacing with the with the with the tips. Yeah. So we don't get the moisture to where we need it to be. What was what was that one? At 60s, yeah. Now, when you guys have the borders up in case you need to flood or anything? No. Nope. Because I was talking to one guy who put a fiddle in for him this fall, mm -hmm. and we're having the borders up just in case he does get a That's a good, I mean, it's a good idea, especially if you have the concrete lines there, or, you know, but that, I don't see that. That's, I think it's a great idea, but. The, the thing behind it is to push the gophers to the border and to treat the border. Yeah, that's how big of a problem it is. That's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I said, I, and we're very proactive, though, guys. I mean, to be honest with you, we. I mean, we're, put, we're going in there with false toxins. We're, I mean, we are very proactive. To, I mean, we have, we have our, our irrigator, you know, we, we have great confidence in our irrigators, and they, these guys are always on top of it. And especially when we're dry, we know we're dry, we're going there with a, you're going there with a ball tank, thousand gallon. And, I mean, hey, compare that to a guy, to guys going and changing sprinkler pipe, and it, it still pays out. But I understand, I understand the severity that, that these gophers can, uh, present as far as the problems. Uh, the, the alfalfa from the 60 inch spacing number, is it, is it a little wavy? It is a little wavy. You, you see a little bit, you know, especially early on, you'll see the waviness a little bit, but as you as, as it progresses, at the end, you'll see a uniform stand. I have some pictures. It's pretty uniform. So, as long as you plant it that way, you know, as long as you plant it, if you, you know, sometimes you still get a, a, a line right in the, in the furrow, like we still plant that way, it'll, it'll, and, it, and the top itself, it's a, it's a very, 
It's unique. And after each pass that you go in, there was a swather and there was a, the bailer, the, the, the ground seems to settle a little bit. So these beds are almost become almost non-existent to where it becomes almost as if it was white. <coughs> Any other questions? So, so why do you use some of the ancient 3-8 thing? And go half-mile runs. We do go half-mile runs. Why do we use that? High water, just high water off it. Try to maximize. Yeah, we don't wait. We, and the idea is to keep it in as long as possible, and we go with the 15 mil just for that same reason. We've seen in other props where we use the 7.8s or we use some of this other, you know, thinner tape, and it just, it doesn't work out. I mean, we've done it in the tomatoes, we've done it, and then, you know, our irrigation systems are set different. We have some that we have flush valves, you know, and then we have some that we have every row we have to go with flush, you know, it, it varies. Um, so the, the first row that we did put in, that has the, you know, every single row, and those are actually quarter mile ones, but it's also a thick tape. And on the other stuff, we've got half mile runs, and we have it set up where it's just flush. You know, you got this big flush valve, right? I mean, that's it. And we, it's just for ease of use. I mean, and, then, and we see it long term. We don't see it. We don't see the alfalfa as a, you know, two, three year thing. We're, we're trying to maximize it as, as long as possible. And this is all around up right at that So, and it, it, honestly, I mean, you guys know, I mean, a drip irrigation system, you're also going to deal with the dynamic that you might deal with less weeds as well. You know, because you're, you're not irrigating the surface of the ground. You're keeping it below the ground. And, and if you do have weeds, they take, you know, a shot around them is a lot cheaper than going in there with a prowl and whatever else. So. That, that's a good point. We had a alfalfa field at Fresno State about five years and, and really the, the weakness of the stand due to weed pressure prior, prior to the, uh, you know, this, this new era was largely due to uh, the failure of your stand and your, your quality for weeds. But if you're maintaining that below ground moisture and weed free environment and keep the pest out, we could be looking at five, six years, you know, exactly. more for a alfalfa. Historically, it's only been a, you know, three years of pushing. Right. Correct. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.